And hello, hello, hello. Welcome back to Sim Games Teal. I'm your host, Tony, and we are going to be continuing our build of Ottawa, Ontario, Canada, the capital of Canada. And last segment, we left off by making the Mechanicsville District. And on this segment, I am going to be working on making the Gleeb district or not glebe but something glebe i'll check the name here to see what it's called and it's called the glebe annex and it is essentially a mixture of residential and industrial area and so we are going to go ahead and be filling this up here so on this side it's supposed to be industrial and this side is going to be residential with some industrial and what I'm gonna do is go ahead and turn this into the area turn this into perhaps I think I'm going to make this into a farming industry over here since we do have a farm located right here it'll make it easy for goods to be able to get there and that is making a profit of eight thousand dollars so let me go ahead and get started on this so let me go ahead and put in the roads and we have Trillium Park running here. Okay, and we have Hickory Street that runs, uh, let me check the roads here. So that is Fairmount. We have <clears throat> Fairmount running through Bayswater. And there's Fairmount, okay. Bayswater runs up and around with a crescent. Old, old Irving Street. Ah, okay, I see how this is going. You know, Bayswater. So Bayswater is actually over here. And then that has a crescent that comes in. Um, Breeze Hill. Okay, so, there's water, okay, and we are going to go ahead and make that area up here, okay, so I'm seeing how this is going now, okay, so we have Kinnear Street, up here we have McFarlane Crescent, so we'll put in McFar McFarland Crescent over here, and that goes there. So that is McFarland Crescent, and McFarland Crescent. Okay, McFarland Crescent. Okay, McFarland. Crescent. Then we are going to put in McFarland Avenue, which goes in over here. Hmm. Okay. Let's try it from here. There we go. McFarland Avenue. McFarland Avenue. There we go. And then there are some small roads that come in here. So we have, uh, that is, which road is this? That is Kenilworth, Melrose, okay. Melrose, uh, okay. Kenilworth, okay. So we're gonna have um, Orin and Hutchison. So we have Orin and Hutchison Avenue. So we'll put those both in. We'll go in like that, and then Hutchison will come over here. Actually, that'll just come up to there. Okay, so that is actually going to be uh, Orin Avenue. Orin Avenue, as such. Okay, then the next road is Hutchison Avenue. And let's go ahead and put that in. So, Hutchison Avenue over here, Hutchison 
Avenue. Okay. And there's some other roads that come in here. So let me see what happens with this road. There's Old Irving Place. And what happens with Old Irving? Ah, okay, so that curves up. So we have Fairmont. I see how this goes. Okay. So let me go ahead and put in this crescent that comes up here. There's a crescent that comes into here as such. Okay. And then Irving goes into there. Old Irving goes into the crescent here. And that crescent is called uh, Linwood. So this is uh, Lin Linwood what? Linwood Avenue. Okay, so that is Linwood Avenue. And it just circles around like that. Okay, good. And, and then there are some other rows that also come in here. So let's check here. So we have Fuller Street and Kinnear Street. So Fuller Street. Uh, Young Street comes on top. So let's take a look here. I will make that first probably. So let's make... Um, I will actually remove this. Make this a little bit shorter. There we go. And then that road, Young Road, will come to there. Okay. So that is Linwood Avenue to there. And that is going to be called Young Streets. As in Young. <laughs> so Young Streets. Oops. Young Streets. There we go. Okay. Then let's see what other road is going to come in here. So we have Kinnear Streets. Let's go ahead and put that in. So we have uh, just one down. There we go. Kinnear Streets to there. And one more road that comes in over here that is called Oh, let's have a look here. Fuller Streets. So Kinnear and Fuller Streets. Okay, so there it is. Kinnear Streets, and that is going to be Fuller Streets. Okay. And let's see what will come inside here. So, over here we have Bayswater with, ah, uh, so Beach Street comes all the way through, so Beach Street, this street actually comes up to over here, there we go, and then we have Okay. There is a uh, breeze hill that comes up and down. Okay, so let me go ahead and put in breeze hill. I'm not sure it's going to be. It's actually going to be Champagne Avenue that runs all the way through here. Okay. I see. Okay. So I understand how this is going. Okay, so this is Champagne Avenue. It comes up to here. Not part of Champagne Avenue. Go oh, well, all the way to Young Street. So with that, and like that. Okay, so that is Champagne Avenue. So that is going to be Champagne Avenue. Okay. And... We have Loretta Avenue South. Loretta Avenue South, which will go here. Uh, 
I'm not sure if I like that intersection too much. So I'm going to just bring it over. Let me bring it down from the top. So let's do Loretta Avenue going down this way. There we go. Actually, I'm going to just stop it there. I'm not going to have all the intersections. Okay. There we go. That's too short of a segment. So that was me, Loretta Avenue. Loretta. Oh, let me get how it's spelled. The two T's, Loretta Avenue. <clears throat> okay. Very good. Okay, so in here we have Fairmont Park. So let's use Park Area. We got Park Area. We got, okay, so that is going to be the Fairmont Park that goes in there. Uh, Fairmont Park. Fairmont Park. Park. Okay. And there's a little road that comes in here. Hickory Street. Yes, Hickory Street. We will definitely be putting in Hickory Street. To and to there. There we go. And that will be Hickory Street. Hickory Street. Okay. And... That is all part of the Little Italy district, apparently. Okay, so that's Little Italy. Um, yes. Okay, so we will make this industrial. There we go, industrial, and I believe that is just industrial there. Okay. And all of this, so this area here, I'm going to actually make this a little area here. I'm going to turn this into um, uh, the Glebe Annex. And we're going to make this a farming industry. Farming specialization over here. So that is going to be... There we go. And we will make that... Uh, the Glebe Annex, the Glebe Annex, and that is going to be farming specialization. So let me go ahead and put that as a farming specialization. There we go. Just as such. And then we could put some industrial in here. So this is going to all be, oh, okay, that is part of the farming industry. Okay, good. So. We could turn that into industrial, and it will all turn into farming. That is what we want here. Okay. There will be some truck traffic going through there, but what can we do? Yeah, we do need it. So let me put commercial all along here. So some of these areas will be all, not all, but quite a few um, commercial zones there. Okay, so let me see what schools go in here. Let's get emergency services in, city services in. So let's get EMS station. We'll put it over here. And we're going to put some um, death care as well in here. Death care will go here. And then we will also have a fire station in here. Uh, okay, that's fine. Uh, and then we're going to call this uh, the Glebe Annex Crematorium. The Glebe Annex Crematorium. And we'll set that to random. Then we're going to have um, the Glebe Annex EMS. And we'll set that to random as well and then we are going to have the Glebe Annex Fire and that as well will become random okay so there we go so uh, let's find schools um, so there is a couple of schools that go in here um, let's let me do a search here so school and there is uh, no 
no, no, no. Uh, that is not the school I'm looking for. So that is, oh, Heritage Academy, no, no, no. Let me just go in here and see what's in here. Ah, there we go. So, Public Elementary School, Louis Arbor. That is going to go at Beach and Bayswater. Now, we may have not named Beach. I did not. So, we're going to call that Beach Street. That actually goes in here. So, we've got a small school in here. So, let's go ahead and find a little school that we're going to put in there. This one is perfect. Oh, just like that. And then that will be called the Public Elementary School Louis Arbour. And then I will put another elementary school over here. And that one is called, let me find the name, Parkdale Montessori School. Okay, so that can stand in as an elementary school for us over here. And let me go ahead and just put it down there. Good. Okay. Parkdale Montessori School, perfect. Okay, and let's see if there's a secondary school that comes in here. I am curious. <clears throat> but maybe not. Believe Collegiate Institute. Uh, ah, it's just over to the south. St. Nicholas Adult High School. So there's the St. Nicholas Adult High School. Uh, that does actually go over here. Um, so I've got to think about that. Um, I do have space to put it in over here. I may just go ahead and do that because I am in need of another high school. So St. Nicholas Secondary. Let me just find a secondary school that's suitable to put here. Right at the corner. And then, then that will be St. Nicholas Secondary. St. Nicholas Secondary. That will go over here. Okay. And we are ready to start populating the area. So let's go ahead and use the residential fill. And I am going to go around starting from here. And putting in residential zoning all along here. Um, I will also put some in over here, so that will help with the worker situation right away. And we have plenty of city services, I believe. Actually, that will be park area. And we're going to go ahead and put it in the park for the residents. And another thing that I'm really looking forward to and exciting about is extending the uh, park area over here and putting some more entrances in. So I'm going to see where I can go ahead and do that. So one and two, so that's where I'm going to go ahead and put them. So let's get the city park side gates. And so let's put a side gate over here and one over here. And then we're going to connect that path into the park. And then this is going to allow people to commute between the residential zone and industrial area and the Little Italy district and Centertown district a bit uh, via the Trillium pathway here. So that we should see an influx of uh, people there. And that should also help out with the entertainment in the area, lifting up the land value over there. Okay, so let's see here. Let's, let's go ahead and make the Fairmont Park. So that will be a city park. So let's make a main side gate, or a small main gate. We'll put that over here. And then we'll put a side gate here, another one here, another one up here. And one more over here. And that completes that. Let's connect that to there. Mm, not quite what I was aiming for. Okay, let's try this way instead. So let's bring it over here. Let's see. 
And let's bring it down to there. And then to there. And then we'll connect this gate as well. And we've got a couple more here to connect. So let's connect this one. And let's connect this one. There we go. That worked out even better. So let's put in a couple, couple of park plazas. And let's see how high of an entertainment score we can get this park to. Put in a chessboard here. I'll put another chessboard in over here. There we go. And let's put in a park cafe over here. There we go. And restroom. We will put that in over here. And let's get an info booth. We will put that over here. And let's see a chessboard. So we're gonna put a chessboard. With a chess oh we already have chessboard, don't we? Okay. So let's do this instead. Let's see a trampoline park if we could fit that in somewhere. Um uh, yeah, we're gonna put it right over there. And then let's have a playground over here. And we'll put a playground here as well. And let's put in some gazebos. One and two, and all along here we'll just put some gazebos in. And that will just fill up the space nicely. And allow us to increase the value and entertainment score of the park. And there we go. Okay, so what does that bring us to? 971, let's turn on Celebrate and Night Tours. And that's 966. So that's for sure a level 4 park because we need an entertainment score of 920 for that. Um, so we won't get to, uh, I don't believe that we're going to get to 1120 for a level 5 park, but a level 4 park is good enough in this area for us. And we've already had two visitors in. Oh, a third one just entered. Mm -hmm. So fantastic. So that is very good. And it looks like we need some more commercial zoning. So let's go ahead and do some more commercial zoning along here. Uh, I'm going to fill in this whole area. Commercial zone, just like that. And I'm also going to put commercial zone all along here, like that. And I think that that is enough commercial zoning for the moment. So let me put in some more residential in, especially near the park area, because that is prime real estate right over there near the park. And we want people living close by the park so they can use it. That is ultimately the idea. Okay, so we've got that going for us. And so let's see what else we've got. So that is pretty much done for the moment. We've had nine visitors so far. So what is the population of the Glebe? Zero, because that is an industrial area. But Little Italy is at 8,700. And that is part of the Little Italy district. Now, now that we've done that, let's turn our attention to the Carleton University. So how many students does this have? 708, almost 800. We need to get its attractiveness a little bit higher to level up. So let's go ahead and go to uh, Academic Works. Let's give it Discovery, a grant for that. And let's go ahead and give it some attractiveness. Now for that, what I would like to do is put in another faculty. Faculty of something. So let's see what other schools there are here. School of Law and School of Science. Let's see if School of Science will fit in. School of Science will not fit in anywhere there. It will fit there, but I think that we will worry about that later. Let's see if School of Law we can get in. And yes, that will fit in very nicely right over here. So let's go ahead and put that in. And that should bring our attractiveness up a bit. For oh, only 435. Interesting. Okay, so I guess it just has more for population and other benefits. I'm not sure what School of Law does exactly and how it benefits the city. I'm sure it does somehow. But it's... But because of the fact that it is a school of something and it has um, a rather large student capacity, it doesn't really give us much attractiveness. So we're going to need to put in something else for attractiveness. Let's see another building here. What is this? This is Academic Statue. 
Not quite what I was looking for. University Fountain. Not quite what I was looking for. University Library. That I think we will put in. Let's put that right over there. Does that hold any people? It has a capacity of 133. Now, let's see what that does for attractiveness. Yes, it brings it up. Oh, it's brought the population of the students up as well. So now we just need to get two more academic works and we can level up to level three since we meet the student requirement now. And we also meet the campus attractiveness requirements, uh, which are 460 out of 450. So we definitely have that in the bag, so to speak. Okay. Now, another thing that I think that we really need to put in here is some transportation. I am thinking about how I would like to do that. I think that what I'm going to do is run a bus line straight down here and straight into um, Tani's pasture over here. So let's go ahead and get that started. And I will just run a bus line all the way through. Let's see how that works out for us. So I will start it here. Where is the main road? That is the main road. So let's put it over here. Let's have another stop there, another stop there, and let's have another stop there, one more stop there, another stop there, one more there, one more here, and then let's go ahead and bring this into Tony's patch, pasture over here, and let's circle it back around, and we'll mirror it back, and I will actually call this. Uh, Let's find out. I'm going to find out what name that road is and name it after the road. Oh, there we go. Okay. And let's just keep this going all the way down. There we go. Into there. There we go. And I'm just spreading the stops out quite a bit. Going about every second stop, approximately, all the way through, and this is just going to provide quite a bit of connectivity and more uh, tra travel options for the Sims that live in this area. So this is a residential area, so that is going to be good for the residential area. I'm going to put this here for connectivity, and we're going to just circle it back and along the road here. We're going to just mirror it all the way back. This is going to be a rather long road. Uh, well, rather a long bus route, but that is okay. I think that this is a good location for it. We're going to bring it through the industrial area here. This will help out with unemployment. It will make it more accessible for, for Sims that don't have cars that live a little further away that are eligible to come and work there. And here we go. Just like that. And we'll just mirror it back to there. Good. Okay, and let's change this to the articulated airport bus, which is what we are using. And we'll turn that to red. And let me find out what this is. So this is Carling Avenue. So we're going to call this the 20 Carling. Uh, 20 Carling, which terminates at the tunnel's pasture. So I think that's going to be a good line. Let's see how many people are waiting for the bus. Mm, several. Oh, this looks good already. That actually looks promising. We have quite the buildup of people. I'd say there's probably 200 people easily waiting for the bus so far. Probably around two, 250 people waiting already. So that is very good. Oh, look at that. Right over there. You know, people waiting there. So I will come back around to that and see how that is going in a little bit. But I think that's going to be a very good addition to the transit network. Oh, we've got the buses piling up here. All waiting to get in. They'll spread themselves out over time a little bit. Not to worry. Okay, so let's take a look here. And let me do some more zoning of the residential area here. And another thing that I'm going to take a look at is the land value. So I'm just going to fill this in so that this could all continue to develop for us. Oh, let's get this here as well. And all of this all along here. You know what I might do is I might 
put some of this in as commercial just so that the residents here have somewhere to go shopping I think that's actually a good idea just like that put in some commercial around there I think I should do the same maybe in here and let's change that to commercial and we'll change no we'll leave that one as residential and the rest of this could all become residential so that will be okay there we go just like that and we'll make this commercial I'm just, I'm just sprinkling some commercial in here so that residents do have somewhere to go shopping there we go now we'll make that commercial there we go <clears throat> all right and how many people are using the trillium pathway 108 so that is making about fifteen hundred dollars a week that is not bad not bad at all then another place I want to put some residential is in and around here. So I want to build this area up a little bit too. Let this start to develop with some population. So I'm going to put some residential in here as well. So this is in the Hall District. We did leave this out last time, so we'll try not to forget it this time too. And there we go, just like that. So I'm sure that there's some people that will want to come and live here. There we go. And we'll make that residential, residential. And I'll just leave it as such for now. Okay, so that is very good. <clears throat> so let's take a look at Carleton University and see how that is coming along. So we now have, wow, 1,117 students. And it is only $5,000 short of making profit. It's costing almost 13000 but it's making almost 8000 That is actually I'm a little surprising. Well, where did all those people come from all of a sudden? But in any event, it's a good thing. They came. Old, sort of, old Ottawa South District now has a population of exactly 9,100 people on the dot and with a land value of $75 a square meter. So that is uh, a positive thing to see. And let's take a look here at La Roche Park. How's that coming along? So that that had La Roche Park had 47 visitors last week. It has a total of 2,200 visitors on the dot. It needs 2,500 to get to level a level three park or a three star park. And entertainment is 1,381, so it's well past the requirements of a level of an entertainment score of 1,120. Let's check on this train. Let's see how many people it's carrying. 453 residents and 31 tourists um, were carried in the past week by the O train, line, line 1, and that is 46% car trips saved, so that is very good. And, oh, I did want to check up on land value in here, because so I do believe that we have some low land value around here, yes. So I will actually put in some entertainment here. Put a luxury playground over here, and I will put another one in here actually. Uh, oh, it's a bit of a tight fit. There we go, that's better. So that is much better. And let me see if I can get a little more entertainment in here. Let's see if I can put a Starbucks in there, and then let's get a subway around here. There we go. Uh, actually, I'm going to put it over here. It's going to have better coverage. And I'm going to put another one over here. So the couple subways are going to go there. So that should bring up the land value for this area. I'm actually going to put another luxury park up inside here. Uh, if I could fit one in. There we go. Okay. So that should be enough to make everything bright blue. Pretty much the whole city is bright blue. Oh, we're missing some area here. Oh. 
Should put some entertainment in here. Let's go ahead and do that. And I think I can put a parking a parking lot in here. Uh, almost, almost. Not quite, and it's just because that road's curved a little bit. So I will have to just settle for uh, something else. Mall parking garage, interesting. Okay, so it's not gonna let me put that either. Let's see if I'm gonna be able to put in a subway. There we go. That should be a boost for the area. Okay, and I will put a small something in here to increase the land value of these area, of these businesses and residences. I think they're mostly businesses over there. Um, I'm not sure about the industrial area here if I need entertainment, but you know what? I'm going to put in a couple of Starbucks here anyways, just to bring up that land value. I'll put another one in here as well, just to bring up the land values a little bit in an attempt to do so. And for there, I will put in a subway as well, right at the intersection here. And that should be enough to bring it all to light blue. So let's give it a moment. There we go. Very nice to see. Okay, so we are missing entertainment in this part of the city, so I'm going to put a subway in there. Let me put a luxury park in here. And another luxury park in here. That should help out with that. So I'll put another luxury park in here. So that should help out with that. There we go. So it's all light blue now. And that is exactly what we want to see all over the city. And that is exactly what we are seeing all over the city. Well, except this area here. What's going on here? Uh, so let me see. Uh, well, i got to fit something in somewhere here because that is not good. So let me, maybe I'll demolish a house and put in a... Uh, Starbucks, and then that should take care of this, and it will be light blue as well. There we go, much better. I don't think I'm going to be too worried about this part over here. Maybe I could put in a, maybe I'll put in a, you know what, maybe I'll just put in a subway. Let's get a subway in here, that should take care of that. That should be light blue then right away. There we go. Not bad. Okay. Now, another item that we should put in here that I did not put in is a... Um, uh, yes, processing plant. That's what we need. A sorting facility. I do want to find a good location for it. Somewhere near the highway where it's easy for the trucks to access in and out. Okay, that's not where I want to put it. Hmm. You know what? I think I'm going to put it right inside here. There we go. So that is going to be the Ottawa Central posting. Uh... Ottawa Central Post Postal Sorting Center. There we go. And we'll just call it the Sorting Center. We don't need postal in there. So Ottawa Central Sorting Center. And hopefully that will get mail moving. Now, um, I did want to... I don't know why it's all red low. I don't know I've got mail places all over. So it could be because of the sorting center that it's not moving around too well. Um, okay. So let's go ahead and put one in this district here. Um, I really think I would like to see that. There we go. And we'll call this the Glebe Annex Postal Office. The Glebe. Annex Postal Office. There we go. All right, so that is looking good.
Again, Little Italy has a population of 9,700. Okay, so let's see if there's any buses we can check here. Mm. Oh, here comes one. So that is number 20 car link. So 290 residents, 11 tourists, and 47% car trip saved. Which means 47% of those people all decided to take the bus instead of driving. So that is a success. And let's go take a look at the Fairmont Park. And so that had 50, 50, wow, 52 people last week. And it's already a level 2 park. Uh, total visitors 678 or 680. Um, and total visitors required until next upgrade to level to a level 3 park is 2500. Entertainment right now is 1065, so that is a jump. It might, might, might just make it to 1120. Uh, but we'll see. And let's take a look at the Trillium Pathway. How did that do? 99 people. Good, 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 good. I expect that people will be commuting over here into this area as well, using the park, or at least I hope so. That is the plan. Let's see if that comes to fruition. Commissioner's Park, 35 people, and that is a level five park already, so that is okay. Is it making any money? Yeah, it's making a couple hundred bucks. Okay, so let's go back to Carlton University. Let's see how that's doing. So we're still at 11 and 1112 students. Uh, so no change there. Attractiveness is all set. So now we're just waiting for the academic works to come in because we have two out of four and we need two more for the upgrade. But I think that we will be okay to get that. So that is all looking fine. Okay. Now just a quick check and let's see if I'm missing anything in this area. I don't believe I am. Um, I will check on garbage collection. So we have an incinerator there. There, there. Uh, I think we have enough incinerators in the city. Uh, I might put one up here. I might just decide to put one up here. Uh, I will actually, you know what, I will put one up here. Let's put an incinerator up there. That will be the lower town waste. And let me change that to random. And we'll make that lower town waste as such. And there we go. And the population of Ottawa currently is 97,477 people. Okay. Well, let's see how this area is coming along. Oh, people are using this road quite a bit. Oh, we got ambulances going out. No, oh, look at them go. Well, they're rushing to some uh, to several emergencies, it would appear. Oh, there comes another one. <laughs> That's always interesting to see. Okay. So we have commercial demand again. So let's see what other commercial zoning we can put in. Let's make this commercial zone. And let's see what other commercial zones I could put in here. Where I could put some commercial zones. Uh, I believe we could put some commercial zones along here. I think that that would be okay. And uh, I think that's good enough for now. We could put a few along here. Um, I could put some office zoning. Some offices along here. That would be fine, I think. We'll make that commercial over here as well. Actually, I'll fill this in with commercial as well. There we go, just like that. It'll actually, make, it'll actually make it more attractive for people to move in that way. Let's check up on the population of Hull. And that is 3,500 people only. So that is actually not a lot. I thought that there would be more with some of the high density uh, residential we have in here, but not quite. So let's see how parking lots are full, filled up a bit. So we have the Ottawa bus terminal, 240 people, passengers rather. So Supreme Court of Canada had 125 visitors last week. Parliament of Canada had 117 visitors last week. And let's see what other attractions I have around here. So nothing much really. So I know that Ottawa City Hall comes here somewhere. Um, let me just do a quick check and see where... Ottawa City Hall goes. We should put that in by now. Uh, Ottawa City Hall. City Hall. I think it goes along. Um, 
Yes, that's where I thought it was on Elgin. Okay, so it actually comes in around here. Okay, so let me see if I could fit it in here somewhere. It comes in around here. Okay, so let's let's find City Hall. Let's see if we can put in a City Hall. City Hall. Okay, I'm going to use something smaller. I don't want something too large. That's way too big. Um, this may be a bit better. Okay, this may be a little smaller. All these city halls are gigantic. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's way too big. Okay, uh, let me see. Ooh, ooh, that's a small little building. I will keep that on reserve. I do want to see the rest of them and see what else, what other options I have here. Uh, how big is that? Some of them are very interesting looking. That is for sure. Oh, we got a small building here. Um, so let's see what else there is. It's too large. It's also too large. It's a little bit smaller, but it still won't fit. It won't even fit. Oh, it would fit in there, but I am not going to be putting it in there. Okay. And you know what? Uh, why don't I go ahead and put it in? So let's put that. Let's put the city hall in. Uh, we'll put it in over here. So that is going to be Ottawa City Hall. Ottawa City Hall. There we go. Okay. All right, so let's see how the mail industry is going. Oh, everybody's back up in business. Oh, no, <laughs> that's waste. No, the mail industry is still dead. Oh, but it's starting to get better. But I think that's because of the sorting center. I, I think it is because of that sorting center. And I think that it's because the mail is starting to be sorted. I think that has a, that has a lot to do with it. Okay, so let's go take a look at traffic lights and make sure that we took out all the traffic lights in this area over here. And let's just go through. And yep, I did miss a couple. And we go, let's take those out so that traffic can keep on moving. And over here as well, yep, let's go ahead and remove those. Let me just do a quick check here. Yeah, I did miss a few here as well. So let's go take those out. And did I miss any other traffic lights? And... That looks like it's about it. We've got all the traffic lights. There we go. Okay, fantastic. All right. So what is the population of Little Italy now? Is it over 10? Yep, it's over 10,000. 10,456. So that is very good. And let's check up on the bus routes on the 20 Carling. Oh, fantastic. 416 residents being carried, 19 tourists, and 58% car trip saved. So that is very good. And let's take a look at how many people we're carrying all together. So uh, 8,500, and we have a population of 98,000. So that's pretty much around 88.5%. 8.6% of the city's population. So just just under the 10 by 10% target, which is not too bad. So it's actually doing okay. I think that one more thing that I'd like to put in is taxis. We do not have taxi services anywhere. We may have a taxi service in one location. Should we have one location there with a the taxi service? I am definitely putting in some more taxis. So let's get the um, Hogs Cheap Taxi Depot. Um, Let's go ahead and put that in. Let's put that over here. So that is Carleton University Taxi. We'll put a few of these. Carleton University Taxi. Okay. And then we will put in some more. That is not going to be it for sure. We'll put one around. Oh, where else is a good spot that I can put one? Where there is space. Because that is key. I need space for it. So, I think that I will actually, I'm going to put one inside here. So, we call that the Glebe Annex Taxi. The 
employee annex taxi and we're gonna this means we're gonna start seeing more taxis going around the city because there were hardly any before I think we had one or two taxi stations that's <laughs> really hardly enough okay we'll put one in here as well this is a good location and that is going to be called uh, the Glebe Taxi. So that is the Glebe Taxi. There we go. And let's put a couple more in. Uh, so let's put one near the university. I think near the university is a good go. In a good location. Uh, let me see if I can find a favorable location for it. Uh, you know, the, you know what? In here is perfect. There we go. So that is going to be the Sandy Hill Taxi. Use Sandy Hill Taxi. There we go. And is anybody coming out? Any taxis coming out of there? Not yet. Oh, one came out. Oh, limousine came out. And another one came out. Okay, so oh, they are coming out. They're trickling out. Okay, and I will put another taxi service over here somewhere. Let's put it over here. And we'll call this one the Hall Taxi. The Hall Taxi. And let's put another one over here. And that is going to be Lower Town Taxi. Lower Town Taxi. So what the taxi service does, so this is part of the Sunset. I, I, if I'm not mistaken, oh no, I, I am mistaken. It's the After Dark DLC. And what the taxi service does is it just very simply allows for... Um, sims to have another option to travel because if a sim wants to they can choose to travel from point to point with a taxi instead of either taking the bus and walking biking um or uh what other options i think that's about it that's all they have right uh, instead of any of these options um what they can do is call a taxi and travel from point to point so if they want to get somewhere fast and they find it uh, most expeditious, they can call a taxi to get them from where to and from where they are going. And most of the time, it is actually used by tourists to get from one point of the city that they would like to go to uh, to another. Let's put another one in there. So this is going to be uh, the Mechanicsville Taxi. Actually, I'm going to call it the pa uh, Tunney's Pasture Taxi more appropriately named okay and we've got a few already going out so it it just simply offers another option for sims in the city to be able to get around from point a to point b and it makes the city more attractive because there are cases in which uh sims would not be able to and tourists especially would not be able to get from one point to another um efficiently enough without the taxi so when the taxi service is there, it makes it more attractive for them to come to the city, to travel to the city, to use the city, um, and to be able and to uh, be able to get around. Uh, so that's the mechanic of the game that it really enhances when you use taxis, because it, it, especially for the tourists, um, they will choose uh, whether to come to your city, whether or not they can get to and from where they want to go. And the taxi makes that option, um, and in some cases, the commute viable and available to them, um, making them really choose to uh, come to the city. So it, it does serve uh, as something important that is not trivial, and it does affect the game in that respect. So. Uh, let's see here. So we've got the Ottawa Story Center. Let's see how the mail is doing. Um, yeah, for some reason, we seem to have mail pretty backed up around the city. Not exactly sure why. 
Okay. But I did notice that after I put in the sorting center that we're having more light blue areas with the male. So that could be a factor. Do we have a male in the whole section, whole area? I do not have a male service in here, do I? I should put in a male service. So let's go ahead and put in the mail service. So that is going to be the hull. The hull postal office. The hull postal office. And how is our city doing? We're making $6,700 a turn. And we have $77 million in the city. So I'm wondering how much of an effect this terminal has on sorting out the mail. I'm assuming it has something to do with the uh, distribution of the mail throughout the city, and it plays a vital role in that, I think, and I would assume. What I'm going to actually do is put a second one in and see how it works and see if it does help out with sorting mail. So I'm going to put another one here, mm -hmm. and we're going to call this... Uh, the Ottawa South Sorting Center. Okay, so that is a second one. And let's see if that will help distribute mail as well in the city. Okay, so how is this doing? 13,700, okay. So let's see if I add these two sorting centers in, whether it's going to improve the mail delivery in the city. So we've got, I think, I think we are starting to see more light blue. So we will see how that works out. Um, we have a mail office there. I think I might put a mail office in downtown, in the downtown area as well. So let me put a, so we have a postal office there. Is that a postal office? Yes, it is. Okay. And so we have those postal offices. I think I may just put one more. I'm going to put one more over here. So this is going to be Parliament Postal Office. Parliament, po Parliament Postal Office. Okay. There we go. And it's good to have a lot in a lot of postal offices in the um, office area, the office zones, because that is um, where they are needed the most. Actually, it helps um, up the levels of those buildings much more uh, than any other uh, zones. So they need the postal service. The office zones need the postal services uh, and benefit from the postal services more than any other zone in the city. Okay. So let's take a look at how that is coming along. Okay. So this turned that light blue, I'm sure. And I am, I think I'm starting to see more light blue in the city all around. So I think it is having a positive effect all around. Okay, so I'm going to keep an eye on that and see how that works out. Um, let me see if I could fit one more post sorting center in. And I'll put this one over here. We'll call this the East. So that'll be the East Sorting Center. So Ottawa East Sorting Center. So we seem to have a lot of uh, postal offices. So I guess that it looks like it probably got all the post is getting stuck at the stations and not being able to, and so it's not getting delivered. Uh, so that's what probably the holdup is. So let's see how that, yeah, oh, yeah, no, these are turning light blue a little bit better. Yeah. So I think it's just going to be a matter of time until that sorts itself out. All right, so that is going to conclude our build of the city of Ottawa, Ontario, Canada for today, and it will conclude this segment. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe and uh, like the video, and I will see you next time. Take care.